Okay, to, tonight is the 20th of September 2010 and this is the 62nd time we are speaking on the Majima Nikaya Suttas. Eh? Tonight we come to Sutta 148, Chachaka Sutta, the six sets of six. This Sutta to me is very important. Eh? Uh, uh, might even be the, the, the most important sutta in the whole of the Majjhima Nikaya. <clears throat> Thus have I heard, on one occasion the Blessed One was living at Savati in Jeta's Grove, Anatta Pindika's Park. There he addressed the monks thus, Monks, Noble Sir, they replied. The Blessed One said, Monks, I shall teach you the Dhamma that is good in the beginning, good in the middle, and good in the end. With the right meaning and phrasing, I shall reveal a holy life that is utterly perfect and pure. That is, the six sets of six. Listen and attend closely to what I shall say. Yes, Venerable Sir, the monks replied. The Blessed One said, The six internal bases should be understood. The six external bases should be understood. The six classes of consciousness should be understood. The six classes of contact should be understood. The six classes of feeling should be understood. The six classes of craving should be understood. Stop here for a moment. Nah. You can see the few suttas we have discussed earlier nah, and the following few suttas are nah, all connected with this uh, six sense basis. Nah. Salayatana. Uh, there is a sutta where it is mentioned uh, that um, arahants become liberated uh, through contemplating a few very important topics. Uh, one of them is the five aggregates of attachment. Another one is the six sense basis. Uh, another one is the um, dependent origination. Another one is the four elements of the body. Uh, uh, four great elements. Uh, uh, so, uh, so this six sense basis uh, is uh, a very important topic. Uh, so that's why the the, the last few suttas uh, uh, we have been discussing the six sets of this uh, this uh, six sense basis. Uh. The six internal bases should be understood. So it was said, and with reference to what was this said, there. Are, there are the eye base, the ear base, the nose base, the tongue base, the body base, and the mind base. So it was with reference to this that it was said, the six internal bases should be understood. This is the first set of six. The six external bases should be understood. So it was said, with reference to what was this said, there are the form base, the sound base, the odor base, the flavor base the tangible base and the mind object base. So it was with reference to this that it was said the six external bases should be understood. This is the second set of six. The six classes of consciousness should be understood. So it was said. And with reference to what was this said, dependent on the eye and forms, eye consciousness arises. Dependent on the ear and sounds, ear consciousness arises. Dependent on the nose and odors, nose consciousness arises. Dependent on the tongue and flavors, tongue consciousness arises. Dependent on the body and tangibles, body consciousness arises. Dependent on the mind and mind objects, mind consciousness arises. So it was with reference to this that it was said, the six classes of consciousness should be understood. This is the third set of six. The six classes of contact should be understood. So it was said, and with reference to what was this said, dependent on the eye and forms, eye consciousness arises. The meeting of the three is contact. Dependent on the ear and sounds, ear consciousness arises. The meeting of the three is contact. Dependent on the nose and odors, nose consciousness arises. The meeting of the three is contact. Dependent on the tongue and flavors, tongue consciousness arises. The meeting of the three is contact. Dependent on the body and tangibles, body consciousness arises. The meeting of the three is contact. 
Depending on the mind and mind objects, mind consciousness arises. The meeting of the three is contact. So it was re reference to this that it was said, the six classes of contact should be understood. This is the fourth set of six. Stop here for a moment. <clears throat> In the uh, dependent origination, the 12 links of the dependent origination, which analyzes how suffering arises, it is said uh, that uh, because of Sankara, which is basically the will to live, la, consciousness arises, la, vinyana. And when consciousness arises, uh, it must always come together with Nama Rupa. Nama Rupa is the mentality, materiality, and basically is a phenomena, la, what consciousness is conscious of. La. Uh -huh. So when uh, consciousness arises and there is the object of consciousness, uh, uh, consciousness must arise from somewhere. La. Uh, consciousness resides in the body. So it arises in the body. And because there are six types of consciousness, uh, there are six sense bases. La. So like uh, uh, the eye conscious or the seeing consciousness uh, arises at the eye base. La. The hearing consciousness arises at the ear sense base. La. The smelling consciousness arises at the nose base, uh, etc. Uh. So, <clears throat> when we look at the uh, the first set of six, uh, the six internal bases refers to the six sense organs. La. Eye, ear, nose, tongue, body, and mind. And the six external bases uh, are the external sense objects uh, corresponding to these six internal bases. Uh. The object of eye is form, uh. the object of ear is sound, object of nose is odor, etc. Uh. And then the six classes of consciousness is mentioned here. Uh. Uh, they arise uh, actually one by one, you know, you see. Uh, when there is, uh, dependent on I and forms, I consciousness arises. Uh. So for I consciousness to arise, uh, a form uh, must come before the I. Uh, then only, uh, and the I is a good I. Uh, then only uh, this uh, I consciousness arises. Uh. I mean by a good I is a, a, a working I, uh, not a blind I. Uh. And uh, when there is a sound, uh, then uh, ear consciousness arises at the ear base. Uh, similarly, when there is an uh, odor, uh, then uh, uh, nose consciousness arises uh, at the nose base, uh, etc. Uh. So you can see, for example, here uh, there must be sound uh, for the uh, ear consciousness to arise. Uh, but the later books, uh, uh, Sometimes there are contradictory teachings. La. Like in one uh, Mahayana Sutra, he says uh, that this uh, Kuan Yin Bodhisattva, he listens, she listens to the sound of the world, uh, to the, in the absence of sound, uh, the, uh, <clears throat> the absence of sound, uh, she can, uh, she can, uh, she can listen, but. Uh, the absence of sound, uh, there is no ear consciousness arising. Uh, so, uh, this is consciousness. Uh. Now, once the consciousness arises, uh, the tree must contact. Uh, uh, dependent on eye and forms, eye consciousness arises. The meeting of the tree is contact. Mm. When there is contact, uh, then there is seeing uh, at the eye. Uh, if there is no contact, uh, uh, then there is no seeing. Uh. Mm. For example, uh, you are deep, uh, you are deeply absorbed in reading a book, uh, and somebody passes you by, uh, even though it's in front of you. Uh, you should be aware, uh, yet uh, you don't see uh, because your uh, attention uh, is focused on the book. Uh, so uh, there must be contact uh, for the seeing to arise. Similarly. And there is ear and sound and ear consciousness. Eh? Then uh, there must be contact uh, for hearing to uh, to to arise, etc. Uh, 
The six classes of feeling should be understood, so it was said. And with reference to what was this said, dependent on I and forms, I consciousness arises. The meeting of the three is contact. With contact as condition, there is feeling. Dependent on the ear and sounds, ear consciousness arises. The meeting of the three is contact. With contact as condition, there is feeling. Dependent on the nose and odors, nose consciousness arises. The meeting of the three is contact. With contact as condition, there is feeling. Dependent on the tongue and flavors, tongue consciousness arises. The meeting of the three is contact. With contact as condition, there is feeling. Dependent on the body and tangibles, body consciousness arises. The meeting of the three is contact. With contact as condition, there is feeling. Dependent on the mind and mind objects, mind consciousness arises. The meeting of the three is contact. With contact as condition, there is feeling. So it was with reference to this that it was said, the six classes of feeling should be understood. This is the fifth set of six. The six classes of craving should be understood. So it was said, with reference to what was this said, dependent on I and forms, I consciousness arises. The meeting of the three is contact. With contact as condition, there is feeling. With feeling as condition, there is craving. Similarly, dependent on the ear and sounds, ear consciousness arises, etc. With feeling as condition, there is craving. Dependent on the nose and odors, nose consciousness arises, etc. With feeling as condition, there is craving. Dependent on the tongue and flavors, tongue consciousness arises, etc. With feeling as condition, there is craving. Dependent on the body and tangibles, body consciousness arises. Etc. With feeling as condition, there is craving. Dependent on the mind and mind objects, mind consciousness arises. The meeting of the three is contact. With contact as condition, there is feeling. With feeling as condition, there is craving. So it was with reference to this that it was said the six classes of craving should be understood. This is the sixth set of six. Stop here for a moment. So uh, when there is contact, uh, uh, between this uh, I and forms and I consciousness, uh, then uh, seeing arises. Uh, once there is seeing, uh, the person pays attention to the form, uh, sees the form, uh, then uh, a feeling arises. Uh, whether, it's a, whether it's a pleasant uh, feeling or unpleasant feeling or a neutral feeling, uh, neither painful nor pleasant. Uh, similarly, for the ear base and nose base, etc. Uh, now, when the uh, feeling arises, it's a pleasant feeling, uh, then uh, uh, craving arises. Uh, for example, at the eye base, uh, uh, this eye consciousness arises and there is contact, uh, then there is seeing, and once there is seeing, there is feeling. If the feeling happens to be a pleasant feeling, uh, then there is craving for it, uh, craving for the object. Uh, uh, the form. Uh, similarly, uh, when ear consciousness arises and uh, there is contact, uh, then a feeling arises. Uh, then if it's a pleasant feeling, then there is craving uh, to hear more of the beautiful sound. Uh, similarly, to s craving for smells, uh, craving for taste, uh, craving for touch and craving for thoughts. Uh, uh, so, uh, these are the six classes of craving. <clears throat> now we come to this important part, demonstration of not-self. If anyone says the I is self, that is not attainable. The rise and fall of the I are discerned. And since its rise and fall are discerned, it would follow. Myself rises and falls. That is why it is not attainable for anyone to say the I is self. Thus the I is not self. If anyone says forms are self uh, in the same way, that is not attainable. Uh, the rise and fall of forms are discerned, are seen. Uh, uh, thus the I is, uh, is not self, forms are not self. Uh. If anyone says I consciousness is self, uh, that is not attainable. The rise and fall of I consciousness are discerned. And since uh, etc. That is why it is not attainable for anyone to say I consciousness is self. Thus the I is not self. Forms are not self. I consciousness is not self. If anyone says I contact is self, that is not attainable. The rise and fall of I contact is are discerned, etc. That is why it is not attainable for anyone to say 
eye contact itself. Thus, the eye is not self form, so not self eye consciousness is not self eye contact is not self. If anyone sees feeling is self, that is not attainable. The rise and fall of feeling are discerned, etc. That is why it is not attainable for anyone to see feeling is self. Thus, the eye is not self form, so not self eye consciousness is not self eye contact is not self feeling is not self. If anyone sees craving is self, that is not attainable. The rise and fall of craving are discerned, etc. That is why it is not attainable for anyone to see craving is self. Thus, the I is not self form, so not self I consciousness is not self I contact is not self feeling is not self craving is not self. Stop here for a moment. Uh. So here you see, uh, as far as the I base is concerned, uh, all those six things mentioned uh, are said to be not self uh, because the rise and fall uh, of each one is seen, uh, uh, namely I forms, I consciousness, I contact, feeling, craving. Uh, uh, these six. Uh. Uh, now for the second base, uh, the same thing is repeated. Uh. If anyone says the ear is self, that is not attainable. The rise and fall of the ear are discerned. And since its rise and fall are discerned, it would follow. Myself rises and falls. That is why it is not attainable for anyone to say the ear is self. Thus the ear is not self. Similarly, <clears throat> if anyone says sounds are self, ear consciousness is self. Ear contact is self, feeling is self, craving is self. That, uh, that is not attainable because the rise and fall of all these uh, are discerned. That is why it is not attainable for anyone to say uh, crave, uh, craving is, is self. As the ear is not self, sounds are not self, ear consciousness is not self, ear contact is not self, feeling is not self, craving is not self. Then we come to the third base. If anyone says the nose is self, that is not attainable. The rise and fall of the nose are discerned, and since its rise and fall are discerned, it would follow myself rises and falls. That is why it is not attainable for anyone to say the nose is self. Thus, the nose is not self. Similarly, if anyone says odors are self, nose consciousness is self, nose contact is self, feeling is self, craving is self, that is not attainable because the rise and fall uh, of all these. Uh, are uh, discern or seen. That is why it is not attainable for anyone to see uh, all these uh, are self. Uh. Thus the nose is not self, odors are not self, nose consciousness is not self, nose contact is not self, feeling is not self, craving is not self. Now we come to the tongue. If anyone says the tongue is self, that is not attainable. The rise and fall of the tongue are discerned, and since its rise and fall are discerned, it would follow myself rises and falls. That is why it is not attainable for anyone to say the tongue is self, thus the tongue is not self. If anyone says flavors are self, tongue consciousness is self, tongue contact is self, feeling is self, craving is self, that is not attainable because the rise and fall of all these are discerned or seen. Uh, thus, the tongue is not self, flavors are not self, tongue consciousness is not self, tongue contact is not self, feeling is not self, craving is not self. Now we come to the body. If anyone says the body is self, that is not attainable. The rise and fall of the body are discerned. And since its rise and fall are discerned, it would follow. Myself rises and falls. That is why it is not attainable for anyone to say the body is self. Thus, the body is not self. If anyone says tangibles are self, body consciousness is self, body contact is self, feeling is self, craving is self, that is not attainable because the rise and fall of all these are discerned or seen. Thus the body is not self, tangibles are not self, body consciousness is not self, body contact is not self, feeling is not self, craving is not self. If anyone says the mind is self, that is not attainable. The rise and fall of the mind is, are discerned, and since its rise and fall are discerned, it would follow myself rises and falls. That is why it is not attainable for anyone to say the mind is self, thus the mind is not self. If anyone says mind objects are self, mind consciousness is self, mind contact is self, feeling is self, craving is self, uh, that is not attainable because the rise and fall of all these are discerned. 
Thus the mind is not self, mind objects are not self, mind consciousness is not self, mind contact is not self, feeling is not self, craving is not self. Sorry for a moment. So here you see uh, the whole six sense basis, uh, uh, the Buddha says, uh, uh, all these are concerned with the six sense basis is not self. Uh, the six sense basis are not self. The six sense objects are not self. Uh, 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 the six consciousness are not self. The contacts are not self. The feelings that arise are not self. The craving that arise are not self. Uh, so this uh, covers uh, practically everything in the world because uh, there's a sutta where the Buddha says, uh, all uh, the all uh, are in the sixth sense basis. Uh, uh, everything in the world uh, is in consciousness, and because everything is in the world uh, is in consciousness, uh, so it is in the sixth sense basis. Uh, uh, you consider, uh, for example, uh, the body. Uh, the body is already covered here by the uh, the uh, the fifth uh, the fifth uh, sense base. Uh, the mind is also covered by the sixth sense base. Uh, objects are also covered. Uh, objects are uh, uh, objects, sounds, smells, taste, everything. Uh, so the mental as well as the physical aspect uh, of everything in the world uh, is covered here. And basically, the Buddha is saying uh, that you cannot find any self in the world. Uh, so here, uh, uh, you look carefully, uh, it says the, the, the argument, uh, why it says there is no self. It says, uh, the rise and fall uh, of each one uh, are discerned. And since the rise and fall are discerned, uh, it would follow, myself rises and falls. Uh, so, because uh, it says myself rises and falls, uh, it's not, that is not acceptable. Uh, that's why uh, it says uh, this uh, self uh, there is no self la, in all, in everything in the world. This uh, here, uh, the rise and fall, uh, is another way of saying uh, the eye is impermanent. Uh. You see in other suttas, like the, the last night we read, uh, the Buddha asked, uh, is the eye uh, permanent or impermanent? And then the answer is, um, the eye is impermanent. Is what is impermanent, suffering or happiness? Suffering, Venerable Sir. Is what is impermanent suffering and subject to change, uh, fit to be regarded as this is mine, this I am, this is myself. And there is no verbal sir. Uh, so in that sutta, it's talking about the term impermanent. Here, instead, instead of saying impermanent, uh, it says the rise and fall, uh, basically the same thing. So what is this rise and fall? Another way of saying uh, rise and fall uh, is origination and cessation. Uh, uh, something is born. Uh, you can also say birth and death. Uh, uh, something comes into being uh, and ceases. Uh, uh, but I find uh, after thinking about it, uh, the most appropriate word uh, here uh, is appearance and disappearance. Uh, uh, everything in the world uh, appears and disappears. Uh, uh, so uh, because it appears and disappears, uh, that's why it says, uh, uh, if you take anything in the world to be the self, uh, then uh, Myself uh, appears and disappears. How can myself appear suddenly and disappear suddenly? So it cannot be the self. Uh, so, just like when we see a movie, uh, it's so real. Uh, when you are uh, absorbed in the movie, uh, a lot of people, uh, sentimental people, uh, when the actress cries, you cry. Uh, when the actor is angry, you get angry. Uh, it's so real to you. Uh, but at the end of the show, uh, uh, then you realize, oh, it's only a show. Uh, and uh, what is very similar to life, uh, actually, uh, is dream. When we are dreaming, uh, it seems so real to us. Uh, and you can see yourself in the dream just like, just like now. Uh, and then uh, in the morning when you wake up, uh, then you realize it was a dream. Uh, and you think uh, all that excitement, uh, all that worry, uh, actually no point to, to, to have been frightened, no point to have worried so much. Uh, it was only a dream. Why do you say it was a dream? 
when you were in the dream, you didn't realize it was a dream. But when it ended only, uh, then only you realize it's a dream, right? Uh, so right now, uh, life is like a dream. Uh. When our life uh, comes to an end, uh, at the end of, say, now average 75 years, uh, when it comes to an end, uh, uh, if, you, if you, you have seen how people die, uh, a lot of people, uh, uh, the next place of rebirth, uh, a few days before they pass away, uh, will surface, you know, they start to see another world. And depending on their reaction, uh, you can tell uh, whether they are going to a happy destination of rebirth or a woeful destination of rebirth. So it's like a, a new dream uh, starting. Uh, they start, their mind uh, changes channel, uh, just like you change your TV channel. Uh, uh, the consciousness is changing to another channel. And this channel, uh, this life uh, is starting to fade away. Uh, uh. So only at that, at that point uh, when this dream ends, uh, then only you realize it's a dream. As long as it does not end, uh, you don't realize it's a dream. Suppose your dream uh, at night was prolonged. As long as the dream keeps going, uh, you don't realize it's a dream, right? It's only when it ends, uh, then you realize it's a dream. Why? Because uh, the rise and fall, the origination and cessation, the birth and death, uh, the appearance and disappearance of the dream uh, is very apparent to you. When, you, when the dream ends, uh, then all that remains uh, is a memory of the dream. Nothing left whatsoever. Huh? Everything that seemed so real in the dream huh, suddenly disappeared. Huh? Not even a trace of it is left behind. The only thing left behind is the memory. Huh? So, the fact huh, that uh, uh, it, it stopped, huh? so then you realize huh? oh, it appeared suddenly and when the dream ended, maybe after one hour, huh? and then it disappeared. Disappeared entirely. Huh? So you think uh, it's like it never existed. Uh. It's, it's only a, a trick of the mind, uh, a play of the mind. Uh. So when we consider uh, life uh, is a longer dream uh, uh, in terms of, say, like instead of 75 minutes, uh, maybe it's 75 years. Uh, uh. But you think of it like the previous life. Uh. The previous life, uh, when we were living in the previous life, uh, it must have been as real as now. But now that the previous life has ended, uh, it's just like a dream, lah. nothing left of the previous life. You don't even, it's worse than the dream, lah. we don't even remember the previous life. Lah. Not only did it totally faded away, even the memory of it also faded away. Uh, so that is why uh, uh, life uh, is so much like a dream. Lah. Only when it ends, uh, then we realize uh, that it was just a play of the mind. That's why in Hinduism, uh, they call it Maya, delusion, a play of the mind. Uh, in the Majjhima Nikaya Sutta 75, I think Magandya Sutta, the Buddha said uh, that we have long been tricked by the mind, long been deceived by the mind. Uh, we have been believing the mind all the time. Uh, and then in the Sangyutta Nikaya, I think the 22nd, uh, chapter, the Buddha says, uh, consciousness uh, is a conjurer, uh, like a magician, uh, conjures up a, 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 a show for us. Uh, uh, one show, one lifetime is one show. Uh, uh, one lifetime we see ourselves as a human being, another lifetime we see ourselves as a deva or devi, another lifetime we see ourselves as a ghost or something. Uh, so that's why uh, consciousness uh, creates this show of life. La. That's why the Buddha says uh, that consciousness is a conjurer. La. Uh, so, uh, for most people, uh, we think uh, that this dream of life uh, lasts 75 years. La. If our life is 75 years, la, we think uh, this dream lasts 75 years. But if you look carefully in the suttas, uh, it is even uh, shorter uh, than the dream you have at night. Uh. The dream you have at night uh, may last 75 minutes. Uh. But you look at this uh, paragraph 6. Uh. Dependent on the eye and forms, eye consciousness arises. Dependent on the ear and sounds, 
ear consciousness arises. Depending on the nose and odors, nose consciousness arises. Depending on the tongue and flavors, tongue consciousness arises. Depending on the body and tangibles, body consciousness arises. Depending on the mind and mind objects, mind consciousness arises. So these six consciousness arise uh, one by one, you know, dependent on conditions. Uh, and they arise uh, just a, a very short while uh, and they cease. Uh, uh, and it has to have this condition uh, for some object, external sense object, uh, for example, a sound uh, to come uh, before your ear consciousness will arise again and then it will cease. And then another consciousness arise and cease. Another consciousness arise and cease. Every time the consciousness arises, uh, there is the world, uh, right? Uh, we are alive. Uh. When the consciousness ceases, uh, the world has disappeared because the world is only in consciousness, right? So uh, this dream uh, is shorter than your 75 minutes dream at night. Uh. It only lasts uh, what the Buddha calls one kana, one conscious moment arises and passes away. If you look into dependent or origination, uh, this vinyana arises uh, because of sankara. Sankara, I mentioned, is the will to live. Uh. So when our consciousness arises uh, due to conditions, uh, it cannot sustain. It will cease. And when it ceases, uh, because of our strong will to live, uh, it arises again. Uh, we want to live long, but we cannot live long. One conscious moment, uh, we die again. And then because of the will again, uh, the consciousness projects. And it cannot last, it will die. That's why in the suttas, the Buddha says, uh, uh, the Arahan say, uh, there is no living being. Uh, it seems like there is a living being, uh, but there is no living being because we, this consciousness cannot sustain. We are only trying to live uh, moment to moment. We are trying to exist, but we cannot exists continually. For most people, we think that consciousness uh, is an unending stream, an ending stream of consciousness. We are conscious all the time, but not according to the Buddha's words. Uh. In the Buddha's teachings, uh, we are not conscious all the time. We are conscious for a short while, and this consciousness ceases. And then it takes a strong willpower, uh, the will to live, uh, for the consciousness to project up again. And then it cannot sustain, it will die again. So moment to moment, we are dying. That's why one Christian saint said that every moment I die. So uh, you can see here that this dream of life only lasts for one conscious moment. And this conscious moments, it seems, are so short that in one second, there are many, many conscious moments. I don't know how many. I don't know whether thousands or millions or what. But uh, this conscious moment is extremely short time. So our dream of life is so short. Short moment only, it ends. And then it takes will to live. And it, 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 it comes into this conscious consciousness comes uh, in, into being uh, for a short while and it passes away. Uh, so because this uh, rise and fall uh, uh, is there uh, of consciousness, uh, the Buddha says uh, there is no self. If there is a self, uh, it, must, it must exist all the time uh, because the definition of self, atta, is something that exists permanently. Because if it exists permanently, uh, you can identify this is me. But if it just arises for a short while uh, and disappears, uh, then where did that self go? Uh, uh, that's why uh, this, uh, this, this sutta is so important. Uh, makes us see uh, everything in the world, uh, because it appears and disappears, appears and disappears, uh, that uh, actually nothing uh, we can say uh, is I or mine. Uh. So this appearance and disappearance, because it's so fast, uh, our mind is deluded uh, into thinking uh, that it's a continuous stream. Uh. Just like last time, those neon lights, uh, you have one bulb, one bulb, one bulb, one bulb. And this bulb lights up uh, and stops. The other bulb lights up and stops. And this bulb uh, lights up. So you see uh, as though there's a continuous line. Yeah? The light goes continuously, running continuously. But it's not running continuously. It just rises and passes away. There's no line. But our mind is, tr our, our, our vision uh, is tricked, uh, tricked into seeing uh, there's a running line. These lights are running, these lights are running, but they are not running. It's just a deception. 
So similarly, uh, consciousness uh, is playing tricks on us uh, and thinking, uh, making us think uh, that life is real. But life is not real. Uh, it just exists for a moment, momentary moment, uh, 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 karna, conscious moment, uh, and ends. Uh, uh, that's why uh, nothing, nothing in the world, uh, nothing in the mind or outside the mind, Nothing in the body or outside the body uh, can be said to be the self. Uh. Okay, now we come to paragraph 16. Now monks, this is the way leading to the origination of identity. This word uh, translated here as personality, uh, the Pali is Sakaya. And uh, I think Rebel Tanisaro came up with this uh, very app translation uh, identity. Uh, this identity means uh, we identify ourselves uh, with here uh, it's talking about I uh, forms and all that. Uh. So because we identify ourselves with something in the world, uh, basically this body and this mind. Uh, so there is this identity view uh, that I exist. Uh, um, this is the way leading to the origination of identity. One regards the I thus, this is mine, this I am, this is myself. Similarly, one regards form thus, this is mine, this I am, this is myself. One regards I consciousness, I contact, feeling, craving thus, this is mine, this I am, this is myself. Similarly, one regards the ear thus, this is mine, this I am, this is myself. Uh, etc. One regards the nose thus, this is mine, this I am, this myself, etc. One regards the tongue thus, this is mine, this I am, this is myself, etc. One regards the body thus, this is mine, this I am, this myself, etc. One regards the mind thus, this is mine, this I am, this is myself. One regards mind objects thus, one regards mind consciousness thus, one regards mind contact thus, one regards feeling thus, one regards craving thus, this is mine, this I am, this is myself. I'll stop here for a moment. In some other suttas, when the Buddha talks about identity, uh, Sakaya, uh, the Buddha talks about the five aggregates. We uh, identify ourselves uh, with the body, feeling, perception, volition, and consciousness, la, the five aggregates, uh, which are basically body and mind. Uh, but here, it is in terms of the six uh, sense bases. La, uh, uh, it's a bit different. Uh. Now, monks, this is the way leading to the cessation of identity. One regards the I thus, this is not mine, this I am not, this is not myself. One regards forms thus, similarly, one regards eye consciousness thus, one regards eye contact thus, one regards feeling thus, one regards craving thus. This is not mine, this I am not, this is not myself. Similarly, for the other sense basis, one regards the ear thus, this is not mine, this is not, this I am not, this is not myself, etc. One regards the nose thus, this is not mine. This I am not, this is not myself, etc. One regards the tongue thus, this is not mine, this I am not, this is not myself, etc. One regards the body thus, this is not mine, this I am not, this is not myself, etc. One regards the mind thus, this is not mine, this I am not, this is not myself. One regards mind objects, one regards mind consciousness, one regards mind contact, one regards feeling, one regards craving thus, this is not mine, this is I am not, this is not myself. Um, this identity yeah, means uh, we identify ourselves uh, with this uh, here, uh, the six sense bases uh, and the objects uh, and the uh, feeling, craving, etc. And this identity yeah, is one of the factors uh, uh, that prevent us uh, from liberation. So when a person attains Sotapanna, then he can see uh, that the body and the mind is not self. Uh, because they are impermanent, as uh, just now mentioned, uh, they appear and disappear. Uh, normally, uh, most of us, uh, we are very attached to our feelings. Uh, we crave for pleasant feelings uh, and we are very fearful uh, of painful feelings. Uh, but feelings uh, are one of, is one of the things uh, that appears and disappears very fast. Uh, but then uh, uh, we don't see it. Uh, that's why we identify ourselves also with feelings. Uh. Monks, dependent on the I and forms, I consciousness arises. The meeting of the tree is contact. 
with contact as condition that arises a feeling felt as pleasant or painful or neither painful nor pleasant when one is touched by a play by a pleasant feeling if one delights in it welcomes it and remains holding to it then the underlying tendency to lust lies within one if one is touched by a painful feeling if one sorrows grieves and laments weeps beating one's breast and becomes distraught then the underlying tendency to aversion lies within one if one is touched by a neither painful nor pleasant feeling if one does not understand as it actually is the origination disappearance gratification danger and escape in regard to that feeling then the underlying tendency to ignorance lies within one monks that one shall here and now make an end of suffering without abandoning the underlying tendency to lust for pleasant feeling without abolishing the underlying tendency to aversion towards painful feeling without extirpating the underlying tendency to ignorance in regard to neither painful nor pleasant feeling without abandoning ignorance and arousing true knowledge this is impossible monks dependent on the ear and sounds ear consciousness arises etc dependent on the mind and mind objects uh it skips uh, all the other bases huh? Uh, mind consciousness arises the meeting of the three is contact with contact as condition there arises a feeling felt as pleasant or painful or neither painful nor pleasant etc monks that one should here and now make an end of suffering without abandoning the underlying tendency to lust for pleasant feeling without abandoning ignorance and arousing true knowledge this is impossible stop here for a moment huh? so here uh, it's very clear when uh, uh, this uh, pleasant feeling arises uh, uh, there is uh, normally an uh, uh, underlying tendency to lust for it uh, and when painful feeling arises uh, as i mentioned just now uh, there is an underlying tendency to aversion revulsion uh, towards it but when neither painful nor pleasant feeling arises uh, because it's a neutral feeling uh, it doesn't stir our emotions uh, so there is the underlying tendency to ignorance uh, um uh, to it uh, so the buddha here says um, without uh, abandoning the underlying tendency to lust for pleasant feeling without abolishing the underlying tendency to aversion towards a painful feeling without accepting the underlying tendency to ignorance uh, to in regard to neither painful nor pleasant feeling uh, and without abandoning ignorance and arousing true knowledge uh, this is impossible uh, mm. but then uh, unless uh, we have cultivated our mind uh, to um uh to 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 have a developed mind uh, it is not easy uh, to abandon uh, the the tendency to lust for pleasant feeling uh, or the tendency to aversion towards painful feeling uh, uh, it's not easy uh, so we have to cultivate our mind uh, then only uh, we have a chance of of uh, abolishing uh, those uh, those uh, tendencies la uh. mangs dependent on the eye in forms eye consciousness arises the meeting of the three is contact with contact as condition there arises a feeling felt as pleasant or painful or neither painful nor pleasant when one is touched by a pleasant feeling if one does not delight in it welcome it and remain holding to it then the underlying tendency to lust does not lie within one if one is touched by a painful feeling if one does not sorrow grieve and lament does not weep beating one's breast and become distraught then the underlying tendency to aversion does not lie within one if one is touched by a neither painful nor pleasant feeling if one understands as it actually is the origination disappearance gratification danger and escape in regard to that feeling then the underlying tendency to ignorance does not lie within one monks that one shall here and now make an end of suffering by abandoning the underlying tendency to lust for pleasant feeling by abolishing the underlying tendency to aversion towards painful feeling by extirpating the underlying tendency to ignorance in regard to neither painful nor pleasant feeling by abandoning ignorance and arousing true knowledge this is possible monks dependent on the ear and sounds ear consciousness arises etc depend on the mind and mind objects mind consciousness arises the meeting of the three is contact with contact as condition there arises a feeling felt as pleasant or painful or neither painful nor pleasant 
etc. Monks, that one shall here and now make an end of suffering by abandoning the underlying tendency to lust for pleasant feeling, etc. by abandoning ignorance and arousing true knowledge. This is possible. Um, so here, uh, the Buddha is saying uh, that uh, only when uh, one is unmoved uh, by pleasant feeling or unpleasant feeling uh, and one uh, understands uh, the uh, neither painful nor pleasant feeling, uh, the origination, disappearance, etc. And then uh, and one can abandon ignorance and arouse true knowledge. Uh, only this uh, will enable us uh, to attain liberation. Uh. As I mentioned before, we have to cultivate our mind uh, before we can be unmoved. Uh, by pleasant and unpleasant feelings, etc. Uh, seeing thus, monks, a well taught noble disciple becomes disenchanted with the eye, disenchanted with forms, disenchanted with eye consciousness, disenchanted with eye contact, disenchanted with feeling, disenchanted with craving. Similarly, he becomes disenchanted with the ear, with the nose, with the tongue, with the body, with the mind, this, uh, disenchanted with the uh, external sense objects disenchanted with the sense consciousness, disenchanted with the contact, disenchanted with the feeling that arises, disenchanted with the craving. Being disenchanted, he becomes dispassionate. Through dispassion, his mind is liberated. When it is liberated, there comes the knowledge. It is liberated. He understands birth is destroyed. The holy life has been lived. What had to be done has been done. There is no more coming to any state of being. That is what the Blessed One said. The monks were satisfied and delighted in the Blessed One's words. Now while this discourse was being spoken, through not clinging, the minds of 60 monks were liberated from the taints. That means they attained Arahanthood. That's the end of the Sutta. So here you see this last, uh, this paragraph 40. Eh? A well, seeing thus, a well-taught noble disciple becomes disenchanted with the eye, with forms, etc. Uh, so if we can see uh, that everything in the world uh, appears and disappears uh, uh, just like a dream, uh, then uh, we become uh, disenchanted uh, with everything in the world. If we really think about it, uh, we think, uh, for example, our childhood. Uh, not so long ago, uh, we were a small boy or a small girl. Uh, and then uh, all that passed by uh, just like a dream. Uh, all that remains is just your memory uh, uh, of your past. Uh. And if it's too long, uh, like the previous life, uh, even the memory also is lost. So at the end of this life, uh, everything that seems so important in this world uh, will all disappear entirely. Uh. That's why in some suttas, the Buddha says, uh, at the moment of dying, uh, everything will become cool, will become cool. Uh. So don't take things uh, too... Don't be too attached to things in the world because very soon we are going to leave everything behind sooner than we realize. And at the end of, the, of our life, we'll see that everything in the world actually is not important at all, just like a dream and just pass away. Only when we are in the dream, it seems so important, just like at night when we dream. When inside the dream, everything is so important. When it ends, uh, then we realize uh, nothing is important. Uh, so what is important is only where we are going to take rebirth, where we are going for the, another dream. Uh, so if we understand the Dhamma, then we are not so attached. Uh, and if we are not so attached, we don't suffer so much. Uh, uh. I think tonight I have no time to complete another sutta that I wanted. It's already... 49 minutes. Uh, oh. I think this was a very interesting sutta, I think, to discuss. This is one of the profound suttas uh, that uh, to really understand, uh, we have to we have got to have a clearer mind. When we have a clearer mind, we are rid of the five hindrances, uh, then we can understand more. You can see, uh, like the Buddha spoke this discourse, uh, those monks who had attained four jhanas, uh, 
and they listen to this, uh, 60 of them uh, became Arahans. Uh. Mm. It is discourses like this uh, which are very important. Not, 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 not like some people say, the Satipatthana Sutta is the most important discourse. I don't see any monk uh, listen to the Satipatthana Sutta and became an uh, Arahan. But suttas like this, uh, where the Buddha explains uh, no self uh, so clearly, uh, 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 if your mind is uh, clear enough, uh, you listen to suttas like this, uh, then you will attain uh, the various stages of Aryahood. Uh, uh. If you were to think about this on your own, uh, you can never understand it uh, so well, uh, uh, like, like what the Buddha described here. Uh, that's why uh, suttas are so helpful uh, for us uh, to attain wisdom uh, and attain liberation. Because the Buddha's words uh, are pure words of wisdom. We just need to understand it. But whether we understand it or not depends on our state of mind. Only when you have a clear mind, rid of the five hindrances, uh, then only you can understand. Okay, anything to discuss? It is uh, dependent origination, but not the standard 12 links of dependent origination. Mm. Ah. So this, this, this part is very good for me to say that actually not self and so on and so forth. Yeah, of course it's important to understand. Because, because after, after, after um, uh, feeling and all and Indian contact, Last, you know, then after last, then you become something after it. Mm. So the first part, like, yes. is the sequence, but like, after that, then you can Yes, yes, yeah. So the craving is the last point where you can service yourself. Feeling, feeling. Uh, if you, uh, you cut off the craving, yeah. Cut off the craving and then stop. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mm. The, those people who became Arahan, uh, it's not due to seeing this uh, identity, Sakaya, but in seeing that paragraph 10, that no self. Uh, it's a paragraph 10 to uh, 15. Uh, uh, if, when they see this, uh, then they become liberated. Uh. The paragraph 16 uh, to 21, uh, when they see that, uh, then uh, they become a uh, stream actor only. Uh, if you be good, uh, if you all uh, read it again and again and again uh, and try to understand. Uh. At the same time, of course, you have to meditate, uh, clear the mind uh, of all the sloth and topper and, and, and doubt and restlessness, etc. Uh, then only uh, you can see more clearly. Uh. Mm. Mm. 
The five hindrances are dropped uh, when you are about to attain, attain the first jhana. Just before entering the first jhana, uh, what is called the threshold concentration by later books, uh, or to assess concentration, uh, then the uh, five hindrances drop away. Uh. attain the first jhana, then the five hindrances drop away quite permanently. Is so, it so? Huh? Yeah. 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 But if you have attained the first jhana, it's uh, no more hindrance. Lo. There, are, there are various degrees of this sloth and topper. La. When it's strong, uh, it is a hindrance. If it's not strong, it's not a hindrance, ma. No doubt, eh, you can see, eh, it's doubt about the Buddha, Dhamma and Sangha. When you understand the Dhamma, then you have no more doubt about Buddha, Dhamma and Sangha. It's not about doubt about worldly things, you know. <laughs> No, no, there are, uh, last year when we did the Sangyuta Nikaya, it was mentioned there uh, about this uh, neither painful nor pleasant uh, feeling. Uh, there is a, 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 I think there is a type that is uh, worldly, there's type that is uh, spiritual, I think. Similarly, with uh, delight, pity, there's a type that is worldly. When you enjoy uh, uh, worldly pleasures, uh, and there is a type of pity, uh, there's a type of delight that is worldly. And then there's a type that is spiritual. The spiritual one refers to the first jhana. Uh. So I guess this one, uh, this neutral feeling, uh, is also in regard to uh, when you indulge in uh, worldly uh, when you you, you, you um, sort of um, your attention uh, is directed towards worldly things, uh, there is a type of neutral feeling. Uh. For example, you see a, a certain form uh, is not especially beautiful or uh, it's not especially ugly. Uh, so you just have a neutral neutral feeling towards it. Uh, uh, or you hear a sound. It's not a, it's not a, a beautiful classical music, and neither is it a, a unpleasant sound of somebody scolding you. Huh? So it's just a neutral, a neutral feeling arises, lah. But there's another type that is spiritual, lah. Spiritual. Um, I don't remember the definition, lah. But uh, you look into the uh, Sangyuta Nikaya, it's there. Lah. I think under feelings. Lah. Okay, it can be end here.